this is the card, this is the track, and this guy siphoned gas out of my car by his mouth. Please call the number on your screen if you see him. Be careful, he's armed and dangerous. First practice session of the day, we are at Mugello. There we are over there, and taking a look at the entries to this practice session, I noticed something very peculiar at the bottom of it. Kimi Antonelli, the F1 driver for 2025, was in this lobby, and I, I, I had to get in the same group as him, which was group 12. He was there by himself. However, I followed him down there, and then Mark Frederick from the Discord also went down there. When I did get on track, I made sure to exit uh, or leave the pits on the opposite side of the track. So he's at turn seven. I'm just leaving the pits, trying to give him a ton of room. And you'll notice pretty quickly here from watching his cockpit, which I actually didn't spend any time doing in the session, uh, but I did see the times and I just kind of realized that, okay, he probably does not drive this car. I mean, honestly, I didn't even know he drove iRacing before this point. Here are his laps up until this point. You can see he did a 154 on his first flying lap, which is about three seconds, two and a half seconds off of where you want to be, which meant that I had an opportunity here to put in a better lap than Kimi Antonelli. It's probably a small opportunity because I figured a driver of this caliber is going to learn any car extremely quickly. I figure this is probably his first time he's driven this car since the new tire update, tire model. Lap number three, the final corner, he's going to just completely miss the apex. He actually had a really good entrance to that corner. I think he just got on the throttle a little bit too early and, you know, you, at some point you have to learn how long that corner truly is because you do have to be very patient through it. Uh, so seeing that happen, I, I'm able to see him go into the pits on my relative at this point and I'm trying to hustle around and get as good of a lap as I can, as quickly as I can. I'm aiming for somewhere in the 51s. That's typically where I put my qualifying lap. I think this is, this is lap number three for myself as well. So my first lap was a 52.7 about to finish my second full lap. Lap one is the out lap, of course, so this is my second full lap, and it's a 52.3, which is a respectable time, honestly. Uh, I would continue to just try and churn out some laps and just lower my times lower and lower. I mean, at this point, it was actually faster than him, but it's still not a great lap, and I 100% knew that he was going to shatter that time. He is making his way around to finish lap number five, which will be his second full lap. The other one was a wreck, and then he had two out laps, so he's really only had one full lap at this point. And uh, this will conclude his second one. You can see already his final corner is looking just about perfect and crossing the line for a 52.89, which is a respectable time. Uh, so two seconds between his first full lap and his second full lap. This will be his third full lap here. And absolutely gorgeous run through that first corner there. His line is looking damn near perfect as he heads into the chicane. He could definitely take a little bit more of uh, these curbs. I'm sure this is just, it, it's not something you immediately jump into when you hop into a new car. There's the difference between his laps so far. Pretty astonishing. And I figured that they would continue to fall down from there. His steering inputs were a bit interesting to me because as as smooth as they were, like as he, he opened up his steering extremely smoothly, but his turn-ins were so aggressive, and I'm assuming that's something that carries over from driving more high downforce, like formula cars, because just for about every single corner, and like in the middle of chicanes when he was shifting weight, a lot of the times he would like chuck the wheel the other way really quickly. In this case, he actually uh, did it pretty smoothly. But it was just something I noticed with his steering, which I don't think would lend itself very well to, say, a full race stint in this car. I think the tires would be absolutely cooked. I would know. I scrub my tires quite a bit. I know what that looks like, and he's got some habits here that uh, definitely don't fit this car extremely well, but of course, this is also only his, what, third full lap out, so he will make adjustments as he goes through. Entering to the final corner, looking much better, already knowing to stay in third, which was something that took me about two full races to understand that I didn't need to shift down to second there. Crossing the line for his third lap, and it is a 151.5 which is a great time, like that's a great time. Most of the time that could like put you on P P2, P1 in these races around there, unless you have like a 8K driver who just like masters this car. These were my laps at this point, and I realized that the more laps I put in, like they just weren't going down, but also a 51.5 is pretty astonishing. So I was like, okay, he must be on quali, lollipop guy. Is he on quali fuel? And the lollipop guy would end up replying to me, Sir, when am I getting paid? I'm not gonna answer that question. My kids and my wife are starving at home and we have no power or water. Um, he was on quality fuel. He was definitely on quality fuel. So I went to the pits, changed over to quality fuel and decided, okay, 
A 51.5 is, I mean, that's a pretty astonishing time. Um, I've probably only done below a 51.5, like literally only for quality and not very many qualities have I put in a lap that good. By the time he reached lap number nine, his time was no longer improving. So by his next full lap, he had stopped improving, which to me said he either is making, a, like consistently making mistakes and just not able to string together the perfect lap, or he's hit a wall of some sort, probably with some sort of technique. So this is my chance to actually do a good lap that is faster than a good lap from Kimi Antonelli. Granted, it's only like five laps in from him. I don't give a shit. It was really cool to get this opportunity and just kind of, I mean, it feels like when you go to a go-kart track, like some random go-kart track, and there's like somebody else there who's like really fast and you just get, I mean, that's, that's what racing is. You just get competitive over like lap times and it feels so good. I haven't had something like this ever since like going to an actual karting track and like battling like the employees and stuff, you know? Uh, so this was a ton of fun and shout out to Kimmy for staying in this group and actually continuing to drive on track with me, even though he definitely realized like, oh, here comes a fanboy joining my group when I literally just moved to this group by myself to have a track to myself. It was pretty cool. Um, it was actually really cool. So I had a ton of fun doing this in general, whether or not I was able to beat Kimmy different matter it was cool that he was down to just stay on track with me around the final corner uh our first flying lap so our first lap on quali fuel and spoilers we did not set a 51.5 we actually came a bit closer uh than i thought we would as we crossed onto lap number 11 a 51.7 was that lap actually a really good lap i was happy with that one but i knew that i could go faster kimmy's laps right there on the right side if you want to check them out he definitely kind of hit a wall of some sort, I believe is what that was. I don't think he was making any major mistakes. Um, it was just, I mean, granted, I know he's still processing things and making adjustments every single lap. So there's probably different sectors, you know, that are faster or slower. And once he strings them together, I'm probably in trouble. So my goal is just to beat this lap before he can string all of that together and get his perfect lap. We're already on to turn seven. This lap has been feeling really good. We have lower fuel now than we did on the first lap. So this should be a quicker one if we're able to string it together through corner number seven and eight, the downhill left-hander and heading towards one of my favorite sections of the track, this right that leads into another right up the hill. If you just kind of like fade off of the throttle, a little bit of brake, and then you build up the throttle back slowly. It's so smooth. It feels really good. Braking as close as we can, or just after that white block on the right side, cutting the inside curve as much as we can on both the entrance and the exit of this uh, the chicane there. It's that chicane is very tricky. Riding outside of the track, braking just before that last white line, tucking in early, treating it as a double apex, going out a little bit later than you would think. It is a longer corner than a lot of people think, although I definitely left some room on the outside there that I could have used to build up throttle a bit earlier and hustle the car a bit more. I think that overall, that's something that I was missing out on uh, this entire week. Final corner, stay close to the inside curb. Don't quite touch it. Cut in about halfway through and build that throttle up as that compression comes through and then ride all of the way out wide using all of the track, crossing the line for a 51.38, which is a, I mean, that's a pretty dang good time. I was very happy with that. Parking my car, here are our laps at the moment. But boom, we have a faster lap than Kimi Antonelli. He was not happy. For those of you who don't understand Italian, he said that this guy really thinks he's the GOAT. I'm gonna have to put him in his place. And honestly, I was not expecting him to do what he would end up doing here. Lap number 15 did not end up going his way. I think that uh, aggressive steering input definitely kind of ended up biting him in the ass. And I, I know, I know that he was just like, man, I got to go faster than this guy. I haven't gone any faster up until this point. My best lap since that 51.3 is a 51.4. And he's hovering around 51.5s still. So, I mean, we're still looking good. I mean, two tenths is a lot. But uh, yeah, this is lap number 18. And we are going to follow along with him here for the full duration of this lap. Coming through the first chicane, looking a lot better. He's learned to take that first curb, avoid the second one, which is correct. And then he blinks out of existence for like a millisecond there. Could be hacking, could be hacking. Just putting that out there, that could have done something to this lap maybe. 
Uh, very aggressive through the second chicane, taking an absolute load of that second curb there. Approaching corner number seven, I believe he gained a good bit of time to me there. Definitely did not slow the car down nearly as much. Rode out onto that curb a lot more. His inputs still look pretty aggressive, but I mean, he found a way to make it work. This guy is, I mean, he, he, he's just very smart. He's obviously very smart and very in tune with uh, the mechanics of reality and physics and uh, in how they apply to driving, of course. Taking a lot, a, a lot of that exit curb right there to get a really good exit out of there. Now I'm interested to see how he takes this. Braking later than me, you can see he's on the throttle for a bit longer than me there, and he's still taking it just about the same as me uh, through the rest of that corner, actually holding it a bit tighter and keeping that same speed. So traveling less distance, but uh, going, if not faster, than around the same speed. Approaching the final corner and watching this lap, I knew it was going to be rough for me. He looks like he might actually lose some time there on the exit of that corner, but uh, gathers it up, keeps it on track, and I, I don't know, dude. A 50.8. A 50.8. Yeah, I wasn't, I, I don't think that I was doing that. <laughs> he got out of the car and disconnected before I could even attempt to put in a faster lap, which let me know that he was paying attention. You know, he saw my name. So Kimmy, if you're out there, what's up, dude? Uh, my wheel then disconnected and I drove into the wall. Here are the results for that practice session. So Kimmy is actually only a 3.5K I rating. I assume it's because he doesn't have that much time to drive I racing. Setting a really good lap. I think I've seen one person set a faster lap than that this, this week. Uh, checked out his stats and looking at his road stuff. There it is if you want to see it. Looking at his recent races, literally all Formula C. So he does not drive this car. I think that was actually his first time driving this car on that track. Shout out. I considered considered adding him as a friend, but I mean, it wouldn't really, I mean, he's not going to accept it, is he? But what does it hurt? Also, quick shout out. I just launched a couple of shirts, um, just some cool shirts that I thought I, I've been designing for a while. We got a black one. We got a white one. It's called the P1T1 shirt, and I'll explain why we have the design right here. So starting in P1, not super common occurrence, but here we are, P1 on the grid, and then T1, so turn one, there's the curb. We are currently behind three people, and we're fighting for P4, actually, with somebody else. Two guys off on the side, as it typically goes. If you want to check these out, link is in description. The discount code is by Joey, all caps. Hi, Aidan. What up, boy? This was my last race of the week. Uh, Kimmy, sadly, not in it. Gabriel placing ahead of us with a 51-3 on pole. Joey right behind us, less than a tenth behind us. And let's get straight into it. We have 13 laps of Mugello. Final race of the week. Joey, hello. There he is, going from P3 to uh, battling for P1 instantaneously with an absolutely beautiful launch. Gets alongside Gabriel at the very beginning of that straight. There's also another guy, car number eight, Randolph, who's moved his way up. Joey is now taking the lead. Randolph is side by side with Gabriel, and I realized there's potential for something shitty to happen here, so I took it a bit slow. I would rather survive and try and fight for positions later than uh, make too aggressive of a move on the first corner and end up dying. You see that so much. Randolph almost going side by side with Joey there, looking for a switchback, but Joey covers it off pretty damn well and gets a very good run out. Both Gabriel and Randolph have an extremely compromised run. I'm right behind them. Think about going around the outside. Decide not to take it. Car number six takes the opportunity from behind, going side by side into the second chicane with me. He's going to hold it on the inside, but we take a faster line around the outside and are able to swing that around, holding our position in P4 at the moment. Massive gap behind P5 to P6, and taking a look at what happened there through that second chicane, car number 16, P6 at this point goes super deep. His line clashes with car number 12, ends up collecting himself and a couple of other people everybody gets slowed down from that that car in the middle right here this is Marcin if you haven't seen him in my videos well here he is he's a very fast driver making a move through turn, turn number seven he's actually car number one so the highest rated driver and uh, into turn number nine or turn number eight again up the inside here making it work in a uh, part of the track where you typically don't see moves go down but he is wasting no time super fast driver I expect to see him towards the front of this pack at some point during the race 
and the top five of us have kind of settled into a rhythm here. Taking a look back at lap number one, a few positions behind Joey, same livery. This is Fabian Ming. He's in our Discord. Shout out to Fabian. Uh, massive wheel spin on launch. He loses quite a few positions here, and that's not the worst of it. Car number 17 and like four other people, I mean, they're five wide momentarily on the starting straight. Of course, somebody's going to die from that, and Fabian ends up taking quite a uh, large chunk of damage there. His front uh, right quarter is absolutely destroyed. Back to lap number two as we cross the line. Gabriel ahead of us looking to fight for P2 from Randolph. Kind of doing a fake to the outside, moving to the inside. And at this point right here, I realized something bad was going to happen. I originally brake early and then I kind of lift off my brakes early to go around the outside thinking that they were going to stay tight but they drive completely across the track killing each other and here's a look back at that. Gabriel really had no space here. I think that little bit of contact they made early on kind of messed up their braking through there so neither of them were able to get the car stopped the way that they would like to. I still get some oversteer but manage to maintain P2 ahead of Allen who's behind us. So chasing Joey now. We've got Allen three tenths behind us. Randolph about a second. Joey is 1.6 seconds ahead of us it's only lap two we have an absolute load of time to uh close up that gap and hopefully have a fight with joey which doesn't happen super often but i mean for the race win like there's gonna be a fight no matter what uh, of course if we can catch him we have fallen off by two tenths at this point uh make that three tenths as we continue to go across this lap but that's about to change joey completely goes off of the track through the dirt there loses a pretty decent amount of time we're about a second and a half as we go through the penultimate chicane, not the penultimate corner, but the penultimate chicane, there's like four chicanes on this track. It's absurd. Uh, I guess there's like, honestly, there's like five if you count like turn seven, eight, nine, ten as like a really big one. The cars behind us have begun fighting and that's great. It opens up the gap. So we're not worried about pressure from behind. Full focus ahead, starting on to lap number three and we are 1.3 seconds behind Joey and that gap seems to be closing ever so slightly. Car behind going extremely deep. Kind of scared me as I saw him flying up in our rear view and uh, he's going to cut back ahead of Randolph. So Randolph not able to make use of that mistake. Lap number four comes around, and we are now half of a second behind Joey. So we put in a pretty solid lap. That last lap was a 151.8, which for race pace is pretty damn good. Uh, they're side by side behind Randolph, looking to go around the outside into corner one to claim a podium position from Allen. Allen going a bit deep there, and Randolph not quite able to make the switchback work for himself. Looks like he may attempt it again into the entrance of the chicane, but Allen slowing down on the apex would have been better for Randolph had he just tried to go around the outside, but there's no way he could have really known that Allen was going to park it there. Either way, they are out of the picture for us. That battling is going bananas back there, but it's really none of my concern right now as the race lead is only half a second ahead of us and it's freaking Joey. We don't get to fight Joey very often. If we can maintain a gap similar to this, uh, we should basically have this gap completely closed up by the end of the straight because that slipstream is pretty righteous on Mugello. It's a very long straight. Coming through the final chicane, heading towards the final, I guess that's technically the penultimate corner and this is the final corner, but that is the final chicane. Final corner here, it's like a very big sweeping hairpin. I like to go a little deep and cut back, treat it like a bit more of a late apex rather than hold it tight all of the way through there. We got onto the throttle nicely in this case and we're two tenths behind Joey. We have a really good run. There should be some sort of fight uh, coming into turn one on lap number five. So that's what I'm kind of looking for is to make a move here. Joey holding to the right. He's staying in the middle. I'm kind of moving to the outside. Was hoping he would move further out there so I could open up the inside, but it didn't happen. We send it deep around the outside, trying to hold him tight. We've got our wheels lined up. My front, his rear. He's not able to take the racing line through here. He actually goes a bit deep as well. Very tight onto this corner for him. I'm looking for the switchback. Breaking early, cutting underneath him. We find ourselves alongside, allowing him room to rejoin the track there. Here's an outside perspective of that one. Very, very satisfied with that move, I have to say. I think Joey may have driven a bit wide there as well into the next chicane breaking later trying to go around the outside hold them side by side dashing to the inside of the next apex and we're able to move ahead of him before he can find space on the track for that so we successfully gained the lead through five corners and what a freaking battle a battle with joey doesn't happen too often really really uh stoked about that move that was probably like my most satisfactory move 
all week. And I mean, there's nobody greater to battle against than Joey. Extremely clean driver. You can have battles that literally span the entire race with this guy. And if you've driven against him, you probably know that. He is hot on our tail though. So the battle is definitely not over. And I am by no means a connoisseur of leading a race. So I'm not, I'm not totally used to, you know, having that pressure the pressure of somebody who wants to take the lead from you is stronger than, than most other pressures. We do have a very good run through that chicane though. Open up the gap by probably a couple of tenths, which is absolutely crucial because we are approaching the end of this lap and that massive straight on the uh, starting grid could definitely open up an opportunity for Joey if he's close enough using that slipstream to make a move similar to what I just did around uh, the first corner of the next lap. So definitely need to hold this gap, need a good run through this final corner as well. He is still hot on our tail, definitely within slipstream range right now. I think he enters that one a bit narrow, actually has to shift down to second, which should keep us relatively safe now. I think his run overall should be slower. Initially, he is uh, he's gonna have the slipstream, of course, but I think we got a better run out of that final corner, is what I'm trying to say. Three tenths behind us as we cross onto lap number six, so I don't think he's gonna be close enough uh, to send a move safely. It would have to be quite a lunge, and he's not gonna go for it. Smart move as we did still have cars not too far behind us. Neither of us getting a very good run through that first corner there. And uh, he is now two tenths as we begin the sixth lap. So just about halfway through the race here, uh, or not quite halfway, but we are approaching it. And I really just need to have some clean laps on the infield of Mugello because that's where as the leading car you have your advantage. Once it gets to that straight, if you haven't opened up some sort of advantage for yourself through these chicanes, you're definitely going to be under fire for, uh, for losing that position. Absolute tragedy here, as my computer, something happens, overheat is uh, what I think happened, is that it overheated, but yeah. Basically my screen went black, uh, Moza shut down the Moza software, I disconnected from the race and then reconnected. My car just didn't, I, I don't know. Joey respawns inside of us. We're sliding backwards off the track. And I don't think there was much Joey could have really done there. Like he was, uh, here's his view actually. So you can see I vanish and then I reappear right in front of him. I assume I was probably jumping all over the place too. Here are some photos, put them in the scrapbooks or whatever. And Joey has no wheels. I don't know, I can't explain it, but here it is. Here's proof that Joey has no wheels. We climb back onto the track. Our computer is running at like 15 FPS. We're in P8. We lost a ton of positions there. Super unfortunate. That was shaping up to be, I mean, potentially that could have been like one of my best races of all time or just one of the most enjoyable. We rejoined the track right in front of Fab, who is still suffering from that damage. So we're kind of like a bunch of wounded puppies here at the back of the track. Joey at the front with no pressure. Same car, same livery as Fab, except he has that little Italian flag on the front and on the, the wings. So it's kind of how you can tell him apart there. And uh, yeah, we are 5.2 seconds behind Gabriel, who started on pole. And by the time the final lap comes around, we just weren't really able to make anything happen. The car wasn't driving at 100%. I was running on super low FPSs. It's, it's time for me to just throw out all of the excuses. And we did catch this guy, Thomas, but we wouldn't be close enough to make anything happen. Joey swerving across the track about 15 seconds ahead of us, and he will end up crossing the line here for the win. Congratulations to Joey. We would end up crossing not too far behind him in P8, our final position. And then Fab, Fabian behind us would end up crossing with his damaged car, still ahead of a few people in P9. Here are the results for that one. Unfortunately, crossing the line in P8, uh, Fab right behind us in P9, bringing up the rear with me. Uh, Joey, race dub, congratulations. I look forward to uh, continuing that battle some other time. Here's the safety and I rating changes. If you guys enjoyed this video, please check out my channel and some other stuff there, and I bet you will enjoy those as well.